Welcome to Hornchurch. We're in suburban northeast London um, and Emerson Park London Overground Station is about two minutes walk down this way and ahead of us about 15 minutes walk away is Hornchurch London Underground Tube Station. So we are in the London borough of Havering here and welcome to the hop in in Hornchurch just behind me. To my right you'll see what, what is at the moment a dog grooming parlour but is about to become the hop shop which is going to be our specialist drinks retail. It's a little tiny shop attached to the hop in and we know a little bit about retail now because we've actually been a shop, a takeaway and latterly due to restrictions a delivery service for longer than we've actually been a pub. We opened here in December uh, 2019 and we did really great business, picked up some fantastic loyal regulars, uh, really loving uh, serving our community until of course the pandemic hit in March 2020. So shall we go inside? So we're inside the pub now. Um, of course, it's not a pub at the moment, as you can see. It's actually a dispatch centre for all the deliveries we're doing around the local area to our customers. So as well as a dispatch area, it's also, of course, a stock room. We've got many, many canned craft ales here from local breweries, breweries across London and all over. We've also got a lot of bottles of real cider and perry. We've got a good wine selection and a whole bunch of Belgian beers here as well that we're out delivering at the moment. But of course, the engine room of the business is the stillage over here. And I'm gonna pass over to Phil, the landlord, to tell you Hi. more about that. Welcome to the stillage. As you can see, here we are, we've got 12 casks. We source them, uh, we, we like to do a bit of range. We do lots of local support on local breweries. We've got Brentwood here, we've got Leon C. Five points from London, sometimes shot further abroad, up north, uh, all kinds of varieties, but we do like to buy locally here, support our local businesses. So in the stillage, this, this, this is our beating heart of the business, so lots of care and attention. When we receive casks, they're not finished, so our job is to condition and finish them. So what you get is a perfect beer every time. To make that work, we do several things. First of all, the temperature has to be between 11 and 13 degrees. So if we check this one here together, perfect. We check our beers when they're in service twice a day in the morning and then halfway through service again. This morning I'm going to demonstrate how you tap a cast. So step back, there might be a bit of, you know, spray going on. Give me a second. You can't get beer any fresher than this. It is literally, this is gravity pour from the cask to the glass. It's perfect. There's no lines involved. Straight, clean, delicious. Ready? There we are. So that will take maybe three to five days to condition. We check it every morning, see how it's coming along. The brewers made this delicious beer. You don't want to rush this process. It, 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 it takes a Again, care and attention to make sure you get the best pint we can possibly deliver to you. So you can see there, the pressure's come off, air's going in, the beer's reacting. We love cast beer, it's live, it's full of yeast and delicious things. So I'm gonna check the Brentwood with you now. So. Couple of things to check. We're looking for clarity. We're going to nose it, sample it. And we're looking there for the condition of the beer, the, the, the natural carbonation, the sparkle, the color, the nose, that is absolutely perfect. Delicious Brentwood IPA, that's in service today. Now going to try a bit more. Mm. Absolutely on the money, very, very nice. 
Before opening the Hop Inn, I have worked since the 1990s in the hospitality industry, primarily in restaurants, and I came into uh, alcohol and drinks through learning about wine and teaching about wine. Um, then I got into whiskey and gin and many other things, getting into beer through being involved in running a very large Belgian restaurant with over 100 beers. And that sort of learning and learning to love that got me into beer. Um, lately, I've been extremely passionate about cider. It's an absolutely fantastic drink and something in this country we don't, I don't think, we don't recognise how great we are at making amazing cider in these aisles and it's something I'm really keen to get people sort of understanding and appreciating. I think a lot of people are not aware that, that perhaps something they're called cider that they're drinking from overseas is primarily spring water and flavourings and a little bit of concentrates and sugars but these ciders are 100% whole fruit, either apple for cider or peri pears um, and we have a really wide selection so one of our real favorites we consistently sell and very very proud of is from Hampshire and that's the gospel green cider and this is a champagne cider made ex using exactly the same method as champagne wine uh, so this is made from culinary apples so Brabens, coxes, and a little bit of Bramley to give that nice acidity. And this has yeast added into the bottle after that first fermentation, along with a little bit of sugar. And we get that second fermentation in the bottle where we see tiny little bubbles and the flavor developing from the contact between the cider and the bottle and the yeast. And then eventually it's turned and that yeast plug is, is disgorged, taken out. And then we see it spend time aging under the cork so that it assimilates and really really delicious complex flavours coming from a cider from those southern counties style uh, culinary apples. As well as that obviously we've got a whole range of ciders, west country ciders from Herefordshire, three counties from the west country and we've got an amazing array. Something I'm really passionate about is perry, real perry from perry pears. This kind of drink really will give wine a run for its money, both for pure enjoyment, purity of fruit, but also matching with food. It's a fantastic option. We have a real fondness for Tom Oliver for his ciders from Ockle Pitchard in Herefordshire and his fantastic work with oak ageing in different casks and single variety ciders and perries. Some really interesting things going on there as well as his blending. Great palette blending along with his cider maker Yarrick. Uh, superb quality uh, drinks both ciders and perries. And it's great to see the single variety ciders as well as these blends becoming more available. Uh, this wonderful uh, russet cider, single agreement russet variety from Turner's in Kent. Again, that sort of eating apple style, clean, delicious and dry, this particular one. So we have a lot of success in the pub um, getting people to sample ciders, particularly where we've got them on draft, like this one. Just a little sample from that, just to get them to start, start to think about cider in a different way when they're approaching these whole fruit and craft ciders. This one, for example, I have a lot of success with among white wine drinkers who perhaps haven't tried cider for a long time and are not sure uh, they like it. This is the Tenterton from Nightingale Cider and it's a beautiful, clear sort of colour from these eating apples from the Kent tradition and the nose, the aromatics are absolutely beautiful. The real precise fruit coming through here and when you taste it, Mm. You've got lovely, fresh mouth-watering acidity and then a lovely sort of perfume coming from that, almost like apple blossom coming from the fruit in here. And it's a gorgeous example of a cider that really surprises people at how beautifully precise and wonderfully flavoured that is and it's proving to be very successful. And it's great because alongside that we also have something completely different and this is a, a West Country cider. You can see from the colour there you've got the tannins coming from the skin of the cider apples as well as the flesh and the aromatics completely different again. You've got this lovely kind of slight spicy character coming from the polyphenols and the tannins in the fruit and when you taste it mm. and you've got a lovely sort of spiciness and dryness but tons oh buckets of fruit making my mouth water is so delicious and this is a single variety apple again the stoke red uh, this is from oliver's again we also have ross on y variety single variety ciders in our stillage as well so there's 
a really wide array of choice and styles and there's more to cider than just dry and sweet. There's also different regional styles, as I've said, and the, the blends and the single variety. So I'm really passionate about getting people to taste and try and rediscover cider. Wassail. When we're open as a pub and able to have visitors, we run tastings on a regular basis. We're covering all sorts of subjects from Belgian beers to whiskey club to wine tastings. But since we've been in lockdown conditions and during the restrictions, we've started running uh, virtual tastings. So that's been really interesting. And every Tuesday at seven, we've been doing our taste along sessions with beers. Uh, so go, get involved in trying different styles and getting brewers involved as well. So that's been really interesting and it's been something that we've been able to do uh, to keep ourselves um, visible and hopefully sort of bring some entertainment to people as they taste along with us. So now you've stopped by, don't be a stranger. If you're in the Hornchurch area or anywhere close, pop in and say hello, pop in for a beer. A fresh cask ale. Or a cider. Oh, or maybe a wee tot of whiskey. <laughs> or a wine. Or what about some uh, rum? We've got oh, rum. rum. Rum's good, isn't it? Got lots Bra of delicious brandy. things. Brandy, we have brandy. brandy. What else yeah. have we got? Me?